Welcome to my channel viewers. In today's video lecture, we will be having a brief outlook of the different types of natural resources. So the resource term applies to anything that is beneficial to man and which can be transformed into a useful product or you can use that particular substance in uh, to produce something that is useful or beneficial. That is called as a resource. And when this resource is derived from nature, you call it as a natural resource. So these resources are actually ingredients of the support system for living organisms that we see around us. They are present in nature because they are acting as a support for the organisms. But what we do is we convert these resources for our benefit or we convert it into a commodity and that is why they are called as natural resources. This includes resources such as energy that we see around us. The land can be considered as a resource. Minerals or mineral deposits in the earth can be considered as a resource. Forests, wildlife, water, air, all of these are available in the environment. They are accessible in the natural environment and they are being transformed for economic gain by human beings. That is why they are considered as a nat natural resource. So these natural resources can be classified based on several parameters. One of the parameters for classification of resources is based on their abundance and availability. Those resources which cannot be degraded in their quantity, which you cannot reduce in their quantity of course over a period of time if they are not being used properly their quality may de may decrease their quality may go down but you cannot cut them down in their quantity their abundance cannot be reduced such resources are referred to as inexhaustible resource that is wherein we have resources like the sun or the wind the the tides all of these can be used we can use them for our benefit but they are inexhaustible they cannot be exhausted they will never get over such resources are referred to as inexhaustible resource and their opposite is exhaustible that is those resources which are limited in their quantity are referred to as exhaustible resource this includes fossil fuels it includes the forest resource all of these can get over one day if we do not use them in a judicious way the next sec second method of classification or the second parameter of classification of natural resources is based on their nature are they biotic in nature or abiotic in nature biotic is anything that is derived from the living organisms so this kind of resource includes the forest resource the wildlife all those are considered as biotic resources and abiotic resources are the non-living resources like the land the water the wind all of these are abiotic in nature the third criteria for classification is based on their reproducibility. Based on that, we can either have renewable or non-renewable resource. When we say reproducibility, it means how quickly can they be renewed? How quickly can they be brought back into the environment? How quickly can they be replenished in the environment? Based on that, we have renewable and non-renewable resources. Renewable resources examples include forests it includes wildlife it includes fresh water it includes the fertility of soil because you can renew it if you if you take appropriate measures it can be brought back quickly it can be replenished quickly these resources are renewable non-renewable are examples like coal petroleum and other fossil fuels which cannot be replenished quickly even if you replenish them they are going to get renewed or replenished after several thousands of years. So you can actually consider them as non-renewable resources. These are the different criteria for classification of resources and let us just quickly look in the first type of resource that is land resource. Now land is a very important resource upon which most of the human activity is based. So this land can be present in the type of hills it can be present in the form of plains valleys river basins it could be wetlands so there are different forms of land resource or you can say there are different types of land resource and this land resource can be distributed for various purposes for example land can be used can be divided as urban and rural land this includes land that is used for non-agricultural use in urban areas and rural area rural areas what does that mean when we say it is being used for non-agricultural use, it means it is used for building apartments or for building houses or it is used for the roads, it is used for the factories, for the industries, for the educational institutions. So wherever we are using 
land for a non agricultural use that is referred to as either urban land if it is found in urban areas or rural land if it is found in the village areas or in the countryside so this is one type of land distribution that is non agricultural purpose in urban and rural areas the second type of land distribution is forest land forest land is land which is being used for cultivation of forest it can be either private forests which are owned by private agencies or it could be the ones which are owned by the government so forest land is covered with forests we have waste land waste land is mainly the desert areas the hilly terrains where there is no cultivation happening such where there is no crops or where there are no plants vegetation seen no vegetation cover this is called as waste land then we have sown area that is the agricultural land so land which is being used specifically for agriculture is called as the agricultural land or the sown area we also have fallow land fallow land is arable that means you can cultivate crops over there it is not a waste land it is not a land that is devoid of fertility you can grow uh, uh, plants over there you can grow crops over there so it is arable but currently it is not being used for crop cultivation such a land is called as fallow land apart from these we can also have permanent pastures we can have grazing land so these are the different types of distribution of the land resource so in the urban areas in the rural areas we can have several uses land can be used for recreation it can be used for residence it can be used for industries but apart from that we have several uses of land for example in the form of grazing land we can have land which is being used for agriculture and etc now these land resources can be shifted from one type of use to another type of use so from one type of distribution it can be shifted to another type of distribution and this is referred to as land use change so land use is a field that is involved with the modification of natural environment or the wilderness into a built environment or into a settlement it could be a semi natural habitat such as a field it could be a pasture so those are referred to as semi natural habitats whereas settlements are areas where people live or people work or buildings so you can have conversion of land from one type from one type of distribution to the other type of distribution and that is referred to as land use change land use change is the conversion from one type to the other type now as per the 2021 report of the indian government 42.4% area in india is being used for agriculture so this is the land use based on the land use statistics but a lot of this area is being shifted or a lot of forest area has been shifted for getting into agriculture or for using as agriculture so there is land use change that is happening and that is mainly influenced by the size of the economy the size of the nation and secondly the composition of the economy that means there could be a shift from agricultural to non agricultural uses for example for living when the population is increasing we need more place for the people to stay so urban areas can get increased or you can have more number of settlements happening for that forests may be cut down so forest land may be converted into urban area or forest land may be converted into rural area or you can have sown area that is agricultural land being converted into settlements and so on so there is land use change which can happen or which is being mainly influenced by the size of the economy and the composition of the economy what type of shift do you want do you want to shift to an agricultural type of economy or do you want to shift away from an agricultural type of economy and the problem is if this land use planning is done well it's fine we can handle the changes but when the land use planning is not done properly when you do not you change the land from one to the other in a proper way you do not plan it in a proper way it can have several detrimental impacts it can have a lot of negative impacts one of the impacts is there will be an increase in the pollution there can be increase in water pollution there is increase in the air pollution because you have not done the land use change properly the second thing is loss of soil fertility so land is the one which is getting affected when you shift the use of land in an improper way when you are not doing it with proper planning there will be a decrease in the soil fertility and when there is decrease in soil fertility it means the vegetation cover will reduce when there is less vegetation definitely the water cycle will be impacted so these three are very much related to the improper land use change 
Now, when there is no vegetation, when there is less water, when there is less fertility, definitely that is going to destroy, destroy the wildlife because their habitat has been destroyed and that will impact the wildlife. There will be reduction in the wildlife. There will be a lot of species which can even go extinct. So, all of these what are shown over here are ill effects of land degradation. When land is degrading, when there is some kind of undesirable or deleterious changes to the land, some kind of a disturbance to the land, that leads to all of these effects that have been shown over here. So, land degradation is an undesirable or deleterious disturbance to the land. It is a process in which there is loss of the biological value and the physical value of the land and this is happening to due to all human induced processes so it happens when the land use is you know the land is having the excess amount of carrying capacity so the carrying capacity of the system is much much more i mean much lesser than the actual land use the number of people who are using the land are much more than the carry actual carrying capacity of the system the system is unable to carry that much the land is unable to hold that much but much more than that we have people using it so there's a lot of deforestation there could be overgrazing there could be too many industries coming up the urbanization could be happening in that area and that leads to all of the effects that i showed you earlier that that is the loss of natural fertility of the soil, less of vegetation, there is pollution of the water resources, pollution of the air resources and so on. Now, there are different types of land degradation which have been shown here. That includes soil erosion, it could be soil salinization, soil acidification, desertification, water logging is an example of land degradation. We can have deforestation, all of these are types of land degradation which lead to these detrimental effects. So, in the further videos, we will be discussing each of these types of land degradation and all of this comes under the land resources. I hope this video has been useful for all of you. Hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you.